Uh, Rishabh, you can start the recording also to all the participants. Yes, and I welcome you all to our IEEE virtual talk, which is focused on digital entrepreneurship. And before starting today's session, I wish you all a happy technology day. As you all know, today is a remarkable day, as today, on this day in 1998, India has been established as a nuclear power. So let's salute and honor the scientific community, R&D personals, engineers uh, all over India for their constant efforts, for their constant services. And let's continue to make it a digital India in near future. So focus on digital India, digital concept, digitalization. We have the webinar which is totally focused on digital entrepreneurship. And we have with us Mr. Uh, like engineer Sahib Preet Singh. And he is basically from Amritsar. And he has been providing development and digital marketing services under the brand name uh, Amritsar Online with a motive to mark Amritsar on international mark. And he has clients all over more than seven countries till date. So with this brief intro of Mr. Sahib Preet, I welcome you for your talk. Yeah, over to you. Thank you, Nukuma, for introducing me. Uh, so first of all, uh, I wish you all a very happy technology day. And uh, since Anuguma has introduced me as a digital entrepreneur, so first of all, I would like to tell you uh, like what digital entrepreneurship is. So the initial slides will focus on the definitions, uh, my profile right now, and what Amritsar Online has been doing uh, till now. So let's begin with the PPT as well, without wasting much of your time. So here we go. I'll just put it uh, from the very beginning. I hope my voice is audible and everything is visible. Yes, perfectly fine. You can go ahead. Yeah. All right. So first of all, this is our company logo. And the tagline says, serving the world from Amritsar. So first of all, this tagline is all about, like in the IT business, the location does not matter. It doesn't matter if you're sitting at home. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in Amritsar. It doesn't matter if you're in Bangalore or anywhere else. So all that matters is your skill set, the quality of your product and your clientele. So digital entrepreneurship in today's state also has the least effect of COVID-19 as compared to other businesses. So this is why I emphasize on all the current businesses to opt in for digital technology if they haven't done it till now. So about my professional background. So first of all, uh, my father runs uh, a factory that's a plastic recycling factory. So since my college days, I have been going to that factory and gaining a lot of experience on the offline businesses, the actual marketplace, right? And after that, uh, I pursued my engineering degree from Guru Nanak Dev University, Amritsar. And soon after that, you know, the people are quite enthusiastic about their career and uh, so I didn't, didn't go in for a job, rather I decided to develop a digital product. Uh, after facing the issues in the industry with my father, I thought like these issues can be solved using this product. I developed that product and it was the you know biggest plunder of my life. I, I made a huge disaster, you know, wasted a lot of time and money. Uh, then gradually, I again began as a freelancer. I All I had was one laptop and an internet connection and I began as a freelancer. I, I put in all my skills, providing services to my clients. And then uh, I hired some employees. My colleagues helped me uh, to you know, stand as a software house. So gradually we expanded as a company. And then today we have clientele across seven countries. We have regular sales channels. And now we are re-entering from where we did the disaster. Like point number two says, I failed in the product. And point number five says, like after establishing a strong base, we are now re-entering the same market from where we left. So uh, what Amritsar Online basically does is uh, we are into client servicing. Uh, we are not currently, we are entering the product market, but right now we are working for our clients. We provide them with website development and maintenance and revamping and every other stuff related to websites. That is our main source of revenue. Uh, the second is uh, we develop softwares for MNCs, both Indian as well as uh, 
uh, foreign MNCs. Uh, we are currently working with a company named Dexian that services Nike and Reebok for their warehousing. And the third point is uh, we are into content creation. Now, content creation is a very, very creative aspect for all those people who want to go into digital technology, uh, but they lack skills such as coding or logics or programming. So they can definitely come into content creation. It includes graphics, videos, crazy stuff. And you know, it's, it's, it takes a lot of brainstorming rather than logics and uh, hardcore programming. And the fourth one is mobile apps. So the least uh, segment of our revenue comes from uh, the mobile apps. So let's uh, move towards what is digital entrepreneurship? Now, if you can read it on the screen, so it clearly states uh, creating new ventures and transforming existing businesses by developing novel digital technologies. So uh, the three perks, like what I consider primarily three perks of being you know, digitalized is you can connect to the world from your place of convenience. Like we are sitting in Amritsar, we haven't left our hometown. Like most of my colleagues uh, that I used to study with have left their hometown and they are, uh, you know, uh, working for companies. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the digital ones, they are right now sitting at their places and they are working from um, their home places as well. So second is innovation is always rewarded, like problem solving. Ola and Uber came into being, they solved, they solved the problem. The problem was when you enter a new city and then you are unable to negotiate or you focus on the prices, like what's the exact price for a taxi or a cab over there, you, you were afraid of you know, negotiating. Uh, so uh, once uh, the, they solved the problem, so that has to be uh, making a lot of profits. Third is you do not need to have a very large team. You know, smaller teams uh, hardly like, like today, Amritsar Online does not have more than 20 to 25 employees in total, right? And we are at a, at a very, very good revenue right now. So, and this slide is the most, most important one. This is the most, uh, you know, common misconception that people have with uh, people who are running laptops and have, you know, specs on. So, uh, like, we are not always engineers. Please do not think of a guy with a laptop as a tech geek or an engineer. Just like a guy with a microwave oven is not always a chef. This is a funny line, but but it makes a lot of sense. So do not think of anyone who is carrying an Apple MacBook like he is a hardcore engineer. He might be a stockbroker who does not know even the ABC of uh, programming or coding. Now, what do you need to become a digital entrepreneur? Uh, I I think it's pretty much clear. Like as I said, like I began from scratch and I had a laptop and an internet connection. So the only thing you need that is, you know, costing you something like investment uh, point of view, it's only your laptop and an internet connection. Apart from that, you need a lot of curiosity because every now and then the technology is gonna change and you are gonna, you know, keep up to date with the things. So you need to be curious about what's going on in the market. You need to have a willingness to learn and you need to be problem solving. We as, you know, experienced guys also, face many, many problems in our daily routine that we are not aware of. We spend hours uh, solving issues. So it's, it's not really that easy, but when you get stuck somewhere, you definitely need to have problem solving techniques for both your company, because if, if your client pro project or your own product gets stuck somewhere, so you have to have that nature of problem solving. And if you are a product oriented guy, if you want to develop a product like Uber, Ola, Zomato, or any you know small scale product also, so that product needs to solve any, any one common problem so that uh, people pay you for that. Else, if it's a competitive product, it's not solving any problem. So you will need to push heavy investments to market that product and you know outbeat your competition in the market. Now, what all you can do with digital entrepreneurship once you have a laptop and an internet connection and curiosity, willingness to learn and problem solving skills. So there are, you know, many, many possibilities. 
the first one I mentioned is lead generation. That is, let's suppose a person is selling these bottles. So he needs uh, businesses that buy these bottles. So he will generate leads for his business. Or let's suppose uh, Amritsar Online wants some clients on board uh, for website development or app development. So we'll be generating leads and gradually converting them to clients. Then second is stock market. Like the, this is the most prospering business right after IT uh, in today's COVID market. It's stock market. Like recently 1.5 lakhs to 2 lakhs accounts have been opened this month only by ICICI securities because stocks are something that need your skill to analyze the stock, a laptop and an internet connection, and you can make millions if you pick up the right stocks. Then is branding a business. Now let's suppose uh, some of you uh, are into research and development. You, you get to a patented product that is gonna solve a lot of problem, but you need to brand it first. You cannot just you know carry that product to a big company and tell like this is my uh, invention or my uh, product or my business and i want to sell it to you they won't pick it up so that has to be patented first right and then you need to have a very very good looking brand that uh, that you know instills a sense of capitalization so that like same set of people are gonna pay you 100 rupees for a product if it doesn't look nice and the same set of people can pay you 1000 bucks for the same product if it looks nice so this is the reason uh, most of the businesses spend intensively on branding intensively and there are agencies that run only on this business uh, because they give you a good logo a good website a good uh, social media everything they make a brand out of your business so those agencies are also earning quite well now next is drop shipping so drop shipping is really really uh, a new business like not so new but a year or so that had uh, it has hit the indian markets so what drop shipping is if you guys can relate to the term that uh, ancestrals use uh, as trading so what happens in trading is uh, a guy picks up some commodities let's say any goods it can be pen pencil bottles abc any any commodity he picks it up he stocks it uh, and he trades it for a good amount of profit and in this entire chain the end customer who is buying the commodity is unaware of the original supplier that is supplying the goods to the person b and b is giving it to c so c and a do not know each other right so in drop shipping what happens is uh, people trade goods online they sell it online without letting their customer know about their supplier like the, their customer doesn't know about their supplier. So what happens is they just need to enter the prices of the products on their websites, advertise it, get the payment and book the product. So the product is shipped by the original supplier to the end customer. Only thing that the end customer uh, will receive is a carton without any branding. And the supplier that is shipping the product uh, will will have a lot of uh, uh, sorry will not uh, will only have the address and not much of the information so this is a thing like it's an e-commerce thing right now it's hitting the market very good and let's move on to the next point is a like you can start a digital agency or you can begin as a freelancer if you have any good skills so right now i began as a freelancer and now i am running a digital agency so i am covering this point number five now the last point is you can start your own blog channel or you can be a digital influencer for example a digital influencer right now i would mark as Sadhguru. like he's the guy who is hitting the markets real hard i don't know if you've heard of him or not but uh, as per the indian markets Sadhguru, you come to the foreign markets there's gary vaynerchuk um, there's grand cardon and there are millions of other people who are building their business right around them they influence the buying power of their audience and, and they get paid enormously for the same. So since we are, you know, have a limited time, I'll be only prioritizing these three points. The uh, first is how to brand a business. 
generate leads for your existing business or your new business to be you know for of course and last one is be an influencer blogger vlogger or youtuber now the difference between blogger and vlogger is uh, a blogger is someone who types in the text the text content whereas a vlogger is someone who prefers videos so v is for the videos you can be, uh, talk about youtubers or tiktokers or travel bloggers like they are all come under the vlogger category anyone with a video camera like can be termed as a vlogger if he runs a blog okay so the first aspect how to do branding for your business right now a perfect formulation for creating a brand like number one is you need to have a perfect logo a perfect website or a blog and a perfect social media now all these formulations when put in together you know will create a very strong brand but but the consistency is the most important thing but the consistency is the most important thing uh, in creating a brand like it cannot go you know on board overnight it needs to have certain amount of time and effort to be put in now i'll explain in detail how to you know uh, categorize these three things and work on them how do you get a perfect logo website and a social media so when choosing a logo for a business the logo shall be self explanatory on its own like you do not need to put in a tagline like uh, a tagline may may ruin uh, or uh, you know may change the perspective so if you put a tagline that makes the logo look stronger it's good but the logo should be self explanatory you should not need a tagline for that now for that reason you can you know uh, hire a ui ux designer who has a good knowledge of psychological effects of colors placing the text placing everything that is what a ui ux guy does uh, so this is the reason like uh, i mentioned in the example like the red color it triggers your appetite so you start feeling hungry and tempted when you see red colors this is the reason why most of the restaurants uh, will have a red color in their logos i have put in like 6 to 7 colors uh, logos with red colors in them now for the logo you you will be emphasizing on a ui ux guy if you lack experience so this is uh, for a perfect logo now let's come to the website part the second thing of the formulation for a perfect brand is the website or a blog now first of all you need to choose a perfect domain that is explanatory now domains like uh, let's say uh, let's imagine any website like you must have heard of that is not a brand but it's it it's, it is moving towards branding so it might be like aapki aapki dukan.com it might be websitewala.com it might be burgerwala.com burgersing.com so these businesses they have a perfect domain it's a catchy domain and and it, it's self explanatory you do not need to read more about it you'll get like 70% of their business from their brand name so second is choose a perfect hosting plan for your needs now a perfect hosting plan what is hosting first of all let's get to that point uh, a perfect hosting is a place a memory uh, on the uh, like like in the laptop or the desktop you have hard disks where you put in data so similarly for the website that is hosted on a server you need to have certain amount of memory for putting in your website you need to pay for it right so along with the memory there come a lot of many other aspects like the bandwidth uh, the data exchange rate the servers the core processors everything so you need to choose a perfect hosting plan depending upon the amount of traffic that you might be indulging in your product for example if i build a website or a product that is to be used the internal employees of my agency like for 20 to 25 people i might not need a strong hosting but if it comes to a product like facebook or uber or ola where i have you know lakhs and crores of visitors coming and going so i'll be needing a strong hosting plan so it's not always the front end uh, that you know costs it's the back end also the maintenance of the entire servers and everything so the third part is a uh, website should be responsive now responsive is uh, a product is clearly you know uh, very stable on every screen size 
earlier uh, the only things that assessed internet were mostly the computers the desktops and the laptops but gradually when the internet data uh, came into being on mobile systems so people started using browsers on mobile so most of the websites they needed to be switched from the entire desktop layout to a mobile layout also and then tabs came in so the screen sizes even even changed more so even in the tabs there were like uh, uh, the landscape mode the portrait mode so the website needs to be responsive so on all the screen sizes it should be tested first and then deployed the next one is uh, the website should have visible call to action buttons that says like uh, for example a website like zomato if uh, is focusing on ordering you uh, the food so so it needs to have the order now or the book now buttons very clearly visible so that the amount that they are spending on should not be missed because of a small button error so those buttons need to be very much highlighted and visible to the audience so that they can perform the call to action should be seo friendly next point is should be seo friendly seo in the full form is search engine optimization now search engine is uh, like the most common search engine is of course google uh, but there are other search engines also yahoo bing ask me and everything like that so seo friendly website is a website that fits in the norms for a search engine so that when people search for the content that is provided in your website your website ranks at a certain position so that people do not face any difficulty in finding you so if your website is not seo friendly it is just like you know having your visiting cards printed uh, the visiting cards here is, are referring to the website so getting a website developed the visiting card prints printed and putting them in your pocket and not circulating them so if your website is not seo friendly you are basically not circulating it so that kills the entire motive of the you know first four points so if you miss out the fifth point the first four points are of no use your website is of no use so it needs to be very much seo friendly because when you circulate it only social media won't help you will need to have a lot of uh, seo stuff done right excuse me so the next slide talks about the perfect social media like in the formulation there were three things we discussed the logo we discussed the website features now we are on to the social media now social media as the word suggests it is about being social you just cannot sleep at night and say uh, that when i'll work a, a week later and i'll put in a lot of budget and a, a lot of money and my brand will become viral no it's not going to work that way social media is just like your offline you know society so if you are interacting with people on daily basis saying hi hello to everyone so that what socialization is right you need to maintain a relation with everyone you need to solve their problems you need to talk to them you need to have a community so the similar thing in fact the same you know environment needs to be shifted online so that's what social media is this is the reason most of the actors politicians you know they are coming live maintaining a relation with you talking to you about your problems so the same needs to be for your brand if you are either either don't establish a social media and if you have established a social media please maintain it regularly be consistent with it it is not a magic wand and it takes a lot of effort to get famous overnight yeah. so uh, first point is you need to have enough of about us content on all platforms whether you are on facebook instagram linkedin or snapchat anywhere so there is always a section like about us bio about me any anything like that you need to put in a lot of content and it should be not diversified like everything fits uh, will not fit all so you need to be very specific what you are about do not create stories around yourself create a story that is yourself be very specific if you are making videos tell them i make videos right if you are making graphics tell them i am making graphics like if, like most of the people what they do is they write in we make digital content what content be specific video or graphics right so that will put in a lot of audience to your platform and make sure you are very good at it what you are writing is actually the truth so 
the second point point is uh, make engaging content you know you should give in polls like say uh, you can put in options and ask for voting and then as you can uh, go in for question answers giveaways quizzes all this engaging content will keep your audience engaged because uh, once uh, you you do not engage your audience you break the relation with them they might forget your brand in a while third is dynamic content like animated videos storylines to make it all inbound marketing now this means once you create engaging content and storylines so that people come and visit your page on daily basis this they subscribe to your page willingly now what will happen is that will generate inbound marketing there are two types of marketing right this is out of the slide but i need to be clear about this thing two types of marketing inbound and outbound inbound is when people come to you outbound is when you go to the people when you will go to the people you will go in form of spam emails spam calls and everything is going to you know everyone is going to block you so to make people come to you you need to have inbound marketing that is through dynamic content like animated videos storylines everything so that people start gaining interest in your brand they start recognizing your brand and they finally perform the action that you were willing them to do like most of the people will be asking for sales or to subscribe so they will definitely perform that, that action if your content is engaging next is post quality and not quantity once a week is enough so we do not post regularly we need to put in a lot of quality and quality takes time you cannot go in like uh, uh, posting in two to three posts every day five posts every day that will just if your content is not good that is just going to multiply your ignorance for the audience and they are gradually going to dislike your page so you need to have a quality content and post it on you know quite a quantity basis keep your audience hungry and feed them only when required next is monitor the stats regularly and make necessary changes now what happens is people often post in the content and then they sleep that's not going to work once you post the content you need to monitor the stats open your facebook on your laptop not on your mobile on your laptop go to the panel search for the stats like at what time are people visiting you what is the region of the people visiting you their age their gender their location everything and then you need to adjust your content accordingly so that you hit that audience and get your brand clicked second is uh, from the main module uh, after gen uh, the branding aspect let's come to the generate leads for a business now a lead is a potential client that uh, may pay you for the business that you are giving them now first let's understand uh, like for generating leads you need to understand where does traffic to a website come from so any website whether it be even facebook or a website that has been you know created just yesterday so for any given website at a point there are mainly five sources of traffic first is social media second is organic for organic i mean to say the traffic from the search engines like the seo thing and the people coming from google yahoo and stuff third is referral now uh, the referral traffic is let's suppose uh, someone asked you on quora not you to be specific someone asked on quora.com that's a question answer based website like uh, where do i uh, get the best education for becoming a scientist let's suppose and someone answers about csir csiu now they they have mentioned a link over there about about your website now what will happen is when the uh, people will come to that website they'll search for the question they look at a question uh, like where uh, do i need to become the best scientist where I need to get to right education from so they'll gradually click on that link about csir csiu and they'll come to your website so that's the referral traffic the other websites are referring you fourth is direct direct traffic is someone goes to the chrome uh, they just type in the direct url uh, amritsaronline.org they just hit enter so that that uh, traffic will not be categorized in the first three categories that will come in the direct traffic because people are visiting directly and the fifth is others others are like 
apart from these four any other source of traffic will be categorized as others so we won't be covering it in today's module uh, basically those are mainly from you know facebook instant articles or google amp so those things are a bit technical uh, now let's come to the sales funnel for lead generation the most common diagram that we have in the industry is the sales funnel now coming to the sales funnel it showcases uh, the traffic coming in from various modules i have just mentioned three to be specific but uh, you can even you know consider all the five that we talked in the last slide the organic social media referral direct and others uh, all the sources they put in the traffic to your website now once the person enters your website you might have noticed some websites uh, that uh, you know pop up a subscribe button you need to give them their email or your contact information to proceed further for the information so once you give them their contact information so you are now aware of what they are talking about what the brand is all about so the first point that says awareness it also talks on the right hand side it's written gather contact info so th the website has gathered your email and your contact info second is interest that is like more of a content and blogs so now second point talks about all those emails that you have in your gmail under the promotion list there are three tabs and in one tab is for the promotion you might be getting emails from flipkart amazon or other websites so those are gradual pushes to create your interest for example flipkart might be pushing emails uh, for some flash sale or mega sale that might be occurring that is to create a brand uh, interest so that you start taking interest after the awareness and third is they will start providing you offers and deals so that you are you know pushed to take a decision like they'll gradually keep bothering you keep pushing you they'll keep on tempting you like till that point until you can't resist so once they give you an offer about what you are already looking for you might have noticed advertisements uh, that uh, talk about the same stuff that you have already browsed like 15 to 20 minutes ago or maybe you know more like uh, you might have searched for goggles or sunglasses or mobile phones and the same ads keep on showing up so gradually you'll even receive emails for the same with some exciting offers now that's the time that's the hardest time when the lead is about to be converted so it takes a lot of effort and once they reach the stage four of the funnel that is the action so once you purchase that thing the sales happens and the revenue just comes to the company so this is the entire funnel how uh, do you enter a digital sales funnel and how the sales is made in the fourth uh, point and it's not always about sales to be specific i have mentioned sales but it can be like hitting the like button subscribing to a magazine or uh, becoming a fan of a certain page so this is how it goes now the funnel that i showed you in this slide the sales funnel slide is a time taking process and people often talk to us like i do not have so much budget or so much time so that i can invest in this sales funnel so we often recommend them a quick funnel that's a non branded funnel now in this type of funnel people will not be aware of your brand but they will be aware of the problem that you are solving or about the services that you are giving for a quick funnel uh, what happens is uh, various social media platforms uh, have an option of creating advertisement with a lead form attached now what happens is you just create a campaign over facebook over instagram and you just punch in a lead generation form now what happens is you put in the budget uh, once the budget is put in the ad is being run to your potential customers they will see that ad they will click on it and once the form opens they will put in their information that is already fed in because they won't have to type in again for example if you are running the ad on facebook now every one of us uses a phone number an email id for assessing facebook so once that form opens on facebook you will already have your email id typed in your phone number typed in and that will be editable because if you make to need to make some corrections or give another phone number 
so only that much effort is required for the customer once he does that clicks on submit the lead comes to your panel so this is how you gather the leads now let's come to the last aspect uh, that i need to be you know talking about in today's session is uh, how to be an influencer blogger or vlogger so first of all i already talked about like what uh, an influencer to me looks like like satguru and gary vanachuk or grand cardon uh, a blogger is someone uh, who influences via text a vlogger is someone who influences via videos so a blogger is the highest paid uh, single handed and solo entrepreneur in today's state because he is literally making on an average uh, 2.5 to 5 lakhs at least per month just through blogging so what are the revenue channels like how how do they make you know so much money uh, just from a laptop and an internet connection so once they have a lot of traffic coming in right so the first thing is uh, on from collaborations and co-branding for example you are launching a brand that is a restaurant brand like uh, let's say a fried chicken brand and you are looking for some food bloggers who already have a strong following because a blogger has a lot of credibility in the market you as a new brand might not have so much credibility so you will definitely need someone who has credibility in the same segment for that you will need to pay them and that payment uh, once they receive so that is their source of revenue second is uh, earn from webinars courses and ebooks so any study oriented or educational or informative material is a source of income uh, for example if you are a researcher or a scholar and you want to talk about some module that you are interested in or you have intensive knowledge about it that you are happy to give so you might build your credibility you launch an ebook price it at rupees let's say 10 rupees 15 rupees 20 rupees or like hundreds or thousands and once you push that book uh, over your channel so people are going to buy it and it's all about the volume uh, i had a client who sold his ebook for 10 rupees and he sold like uh, 25 lakh copies within india so that sums up to like approximately 2.5 cr rupees within two months so that's you know bit of a revenue for a single a single handed entrepreneur who doesn't uh, who did not make a lot of investment Uh, in the infrastructure or you know industry the third point is uh, on from affiliate marketing now what is affiliate marketing uh, affiliate marketing is selling someone's uh, else uh, products for a certain amount of cut you like or a commission so there are uh, platforms like clickbank.com or other websites which are the market places for affiliate marketing now what happens over there is you need to register yourself you get uh, a code that you need to embed in your website for example if you was uh, talking about a food blogger so he might be interested in some food products let's suppose a recipe book or uh, some dry masalas or powders and he can pick those products sell them through uh, his platform and gain the commission for the, for every sale so that is also a good option if you have a successful blog or you are an influencer amazon recently started its uh, own platform by the name of amazon influencers so people who uh, influence people to make them buy products from amazon itself are also making a lot of money in these days now the last point is earn from advertisements so this is the most granted way of revenue even if you fail to you know make money from the first three options so advertisements is, are always in hand and they can be in form of google uh, adsense or other platforms that provide you cost per click or cost per view revenue even facebook has made it easy to you know you might be noticing advertisements every now and then in the facebook videos like the facebook watch feature so the videos that are showing up in stream ads so even those are a good source of revenue so provided you have a good 
traffic, all these revenue channels can be encashed and give you good returns. Now, what are the popular niches for influencing? People often talk to me like, uh, we want to begin something. What, what should we write about? What should we talk about? So first of all, I always recommend them to go in for the skill that they are good at. Do not follow anyone. Speak your heart out, what you are good at, discover it. And see, the digital industry is always open for everyone. It is not like uh, if you are not good at something or the other, so you, you will fail. Uh, even people who talk negative, like about depression, anxiety, like how they suffered, how they recovered, everything, even they relate to a lot of audiences. So it is all about clicking. Once you click the similar audiences that relate to you, your thoughts or anything else, even your skill set, let's suppose uh, some of you might be into robotics or research or AI or anything that I may not be into right now. Let's for an example. And once you start talking about it, people who are already into that field will relate to you or you talk about your emotions, they will relate to you. That is the main source of unique income because you're not competing with anyone. You are speaking what you know, what you have to speak and that builds a unique set of audience. Uh, whereas these are some of the niches uh, which are you know quite competitive and going on these days, but these are the granted niches. Like you jump into them, you will definitely have some sort of audiences, but revenues considerably will be very competitive because people do not want to see the same stuff again and again. So they definitely, uh, you will need to compete with the people already present in the industry. 90% is food bloggers, 86% fashion bloggers, 50% are travel bloggers and 20% talk about other. Now this is not the uh, percentage, it's not about the percentage of market cap, uh, capturing. This is a percentage of competition. So, so that doesn't mean like the people in 20% section, section of the other categories will, will not have, will have only a minor share of the market. It might be like 20% uh, people will have most of the market capturing because they are into something that is, you know, very less competitive. So things to consider when becoming an influencer or a blogger or a vlogger, do not imitate any other influencer. So this is the reason I said like uh, go in for an industry which is less competitive. You have your own heart speaking out for yourself. So do not try to imitate anyone else. Do not copy any text, music or protected videos because uh, one of my clients uh, did this thing to himself. What he did is he was, he had a very, very, very good going sports channel and on Twitter, they, you know, picked out some footages of some news and stuff like that. Those were copyrighted and they put it in their Twitter channel and they had a lot of visitors traffic coming in from the Twitter itself. Now what happened is Twitter recognized like they are using this copyrighted material and their Twitter channel was banned. So they had to suffer a lot of loss in the business and it took me a while to get the Twitter back on board. We had to submit a lot of apologies and applications and stuff like that. Now the third point is sell what suits you, right? So it is definitely about the niche. Like I, as a digital entrepreneur, if I start selling uh, masalas, so it won't fit my niche. Just because I'm getting a good payout, I'm getting a good client on board, doesn't mean I will sell anything. So you need to sell what suits you. If you are into food blogging, do not sell IT products, right? Because there are people who are very desperate to get famous and they start picking up anything that is available to them. Like uh, if I ha talk about some people, they start a food blog, they do not get a food advertisement for a while. What they get is a fitness advertisement. They start fitting food into a, a fitness by altering their content uh, like uh, ko kya pata lagega. So this is that statement needs to be very well categorized. Sell what suits you. Fourth point is collaborate only with people with higher authority. So this is what I have been using throughout my lifetime. I only collaborate as a brand with people who have a higher authority than, than me. What happens is your website is constantly being monitored with various metrics. Like uh, to be specific, let's talk about only two metrics. One is DA, D as in domain authority, 
second one is pa that is page authority so a website with a bigger domain authority than me i will be happy to collaborate with them they might not be aware of this thing because i am a technical guy i i might know like uh, this website da is superior to mine so i'll definitely collaborate because whenever you share your da with someone it gets split it is just like your reputation uh, offline uh, like if you are into formal suits and everything and a person uh, who is not so well looking right so people often hesitate uh, to collaborate with them like their respect will fall that that how i may not be you know very uh, generous in these terms but this is what how it goes in the society so the da is a similar thing you need to be very careful about sharing or collaborating your website with anyone else so you do go go to the da pa checkers check your da check the other guys da and check if you can collaborate or not so that was all for today from my side and uh, this is our last thank you slide that says serving the world from amritsar and that's the contact a website if you have any problems you can visit this website find the contact info and you know write to us yeah thank you sahib pri yeah. yeah now the session is open for questions and discussions so i request participants to like whosoever have any doubt can unmute yourself and sahib pri can take up your query Hello, Sahib. Yeah, yeah. It's Vishal Preeting. Yeah, hi, Vishal. So, can you describe organic traffic again? All right. So, Vishal, organic traffic is something. Uh, as the name suggests, let's suppose you uh, go to Google and you type in your problem. Let's suppose uh, I recently started discovering gray strands in my beard. Right. I went to Google. i wrote in uh, uh, remedies for gray hair and some of the websites they started popping up now i as a uh, sufferer would always look in for the websites with a higher authority so the website that was you know popping in the first two to three results i just clicked them i did not go to the second page of google so those websites received me as their potential client because they are obviously selling some solution so they see me as a potential uh, client and to them i am an organic lead i am an organic traffic so this is what organic traffic is like you actually are looking for something and you are actually landing on a website that is that thing so you that website is receiving organic traffic. thank you sir So anyone else uh, having any hi, query? Hi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Pooja. I want to ask. Uh, you mentioned about drop shipping, right? Uh, yes. So I would like to know uh, that if there is any real uh, use case uh, nowadays regarding blockchain in supply uh, chain management. Mm -hmm. If in current scenario, if we are using blockchain in uh, this uh, digital marketing domain. if you have come across any question. can can you please repeat your question you mentioned about drop shipping uh, where are the uh, we don't know supply there is no transparency but nowadays blockchain uh, is there it's used in bitcoin module but if mm -hmm. in supply chain management there is any use case in digital marketing if you have come across that we are using blockchain there or any future in this domain no because uh, to be very honest uh, in uh, this supply chain management of drop shipping there are very very few suppliers like everyone cannot uh, everyone is not a reliable supplier so the main uh, platform that every drop shipper is aware of is aliexpress so 90% of the sales that happen through drop shipping is from aliexpress that's a platform from china Uh, alibaba's allied company it's aliexpress so first of all that company will be you know taken for sure like this is one of the major suppliers and moreover if you are talking about blockchain uh, 
uh, that uh, about the transparency issues so even the bitcoin you know it is a non traceable uh, transfers are going on like it is it cannot be traced so this is the reason bitcoins or other cryptocurrencies are often used for illegitimate uh, you know transactions for potential drug supplies or for selling adult content on the in the countries where it is not permitted so bitcoins is definitely a concern for you know security am i are you satisfied with the answer or should i you know exaggerate on that fine but that bitcoin is another aspect but if we look at the model of blockchain so lots mm -hmm. of research are going on uh, and blockchain is comparatively like it's transparent uh, if we look at the structure of blockchains so we can have a talk later i think it would yeah yeah, uh, yeah. I, I got your point. But yeah blockchain basically is like more of a decentralized concept so yeah. rather than being a centralized ledger so it's a decentralized ledger uh, it yeah. is not actually very much transparent but yeah it uh, the thing that you want to talk, uh, say is uh, like the ledger is accurate and up to the mark right. because it can be we can talk G in gst as well uh, the share is uh, divided or uh, transparent in uh, equally in transparency so the hmm. same model can be employed in case of blockchain if we are using in digital marketing so I think it's yeah, definitely. A, it can be. It can yeah. be employed. It can be definitely. Yeah. But I don't yeah. think most of the companies will agree to that because you know everyone's yeah. making their bread and butter from drop shipping. So no one will ever you know tell the secrets out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, anyone else having any query? Hello, sir. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Got to know that you are also an engineer and I'm also an engineer. Like uh, when you were graduating, yeah, and जब आपकी graduation complete हुई and you were having an idea of uh, starting a startup, जैसे सर मेरे पास भी काफी सारे ideas हैं and how to proceed in this domain of मतलब एकदम से different किसी domain के अंदर आकर कुछ नया ही startup के लिए अपने आप को सोचना। हम्म इसलिए थोड़ी सी आपकी guidance चाहिए थी। Definitely you can have my number from uh... uh wishav uh, is uh, any organizer from right here if i want to connect with this guy after the meeting oh yes i agree yeah wishav i'll be needing to connect with this guy i am not sure what is okay. okay sure we will connect uh, after this session okay but, but to, to be precise i would like to answer you know some bit of the answer here because there might be people who have, may have the same set of questions so uh, aryan uh, let's uh, talk about the startup thing that known as not a digital startup to be precise because you said it's going to be a different niche right uh, so talking about that startup you just need to go in and jump in with a small level of testing do not just you know spend all your funds and time and resources just begin with a small scale to be precise uh, in your neighborhood or anywhere else to have a general senses of what this project will go if it goes live on a larger scale so once you figure that out you receive a positive response then there's no looking back also sir can you please manage to share the uh, ppt slides afterwards please ppt yeah definitely presentation okay. definitely i would love to i would love to share any more questions or any doubts uh, sir okay, uh, one so more query uh, in between yeah. the session you were mentioning some name of the people like i couldn't recall those names they were they were a bit right. confusing Can you mention All those right. in the so, comment section yeah just a minute because i was having some issues with the screen sharing module and now you can stop and sharing and must go through their profile yeah just a minute i'll just put the names in the chat box the first one is gary v and second is i'm not sure about the spellings 
Uh, Google will correct them for me, like he's my personal assistant. So you can Google the names and get it corrected from there. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, perfect. So any other query? Yeah. Anything you would like to discuss with our speaker? Any doubts? Hello, sir. It's Sukhwinda here. Yeah, hi, Sukhwinda. How are you? I'm good, sir. Thank you. Uh, so actually, I would like to know more about drop shipping. That is, uh, the market is different in US and in India uh, about yeah, drop shipping. Uh, there is little successful drop shipping, but I don't believe that Indian market is stable for drop shipping for now uh, five years. I just want more about it. Like, yeah, definitely. yeah, definitely. I love to tell you because first of all, no one drop ships in India because nah, because uh, in the way no one sells in India. Drop shippers are from India. They create advertisements. They tie up with the Chinese suppliers. And then where they sell is they sell in US, Canada, Australia. They they pay they you know sell in the high paying markets because uh, the currency difference is quite a bit, and uh, you know they they those people love to pay for the technology. So most of the things that are being sold online for drop shipping include uh, these technical yeah. stuff like drones, uh, power banks, and then uh, AI based uh, stuff. Like uh, initially the Raspberry, uh, I forgot uh, the Raspberry, the chipsets, those were being circulated from uh, China to USA. It's Raspberry Pi. Yes, you know, margins. So, sir, is there is there any possibility in the coming time that India will have that market? You want to sell in India? Yeah, India. Uh, like, if you want to uh, start drop shipping in India itself, first of, all, have a first, of all, first of all, I will never recommend because the, uh, you might be thinking like like you physically need to pack the product and sell it. First of all, let's make this thing clear. In drop shipping, you do not need to touch the product. All the stuff is done by the original supplier, including the packaging, the billing, the address, the courier, and the confirmation of the receipt. Everything is done by the original supplier. You just need to sit on your laptop. You just need to book the orders from the front, keep your profits in your pocket, and pay the uh, price that you guys decided on. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm taking much time, but uh, like one more doubt. Like we are importing much item from China, and hmm. there are major players. There is no drop shipping in India. Like you, you discussed about Alibaba and uh, AliExpress. Mm -hmm. So, can mm -hmm. it uh, is it possible that we can do it from China to India in the way uh, like drop shipping? Yeah, definitely. Once once this Geo Mart things comes into play, the Geo Mart is already you know the Geo is already tying up with Facebook, and Facebook has acquired ten percent stake in Geo, and rest ten percent is in you know in the process. They might take up twenty percent of the Geo's company. And then they are, you know, already focusing on to begin with. They are beginning with the essential FMCG goods like uh, Russian and everything, just like DMART. But they'll be delivering it like Zomato to your door place. So it, there might be a possibility in the near future that they'll even consider drop shipping as a, uh, you know, good uh, marketplace for India. Thank you, sir. I would like to be in touch with you. If it's possible. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Thank you so much. Uh, anyone oh, else? Yeah. Any more questions before we end up today's session? Okay, so thank you, Mr. Sahib Preet. So before we end, we would like to make it uh, memorable for you as well for all of us. So I would request everyone to turn on Hello. your camera and have a Group picture. Hello. Hello. Uh, yes. Uh, my question is: uh, uh, mm -hmm. If I want, uh, uh, there is demand of, of items in foreign, then we do uh, as new entrepreneurs. 
I am not able to. Hello. I am not able to properly hear the question. Uh, maybe. Yeah, could you chat, uh, write in the chat box? Could you write in the chat box? Sir, yeah. uh, my. You can even even speak in your native language. It's not Hindi. Me, बोल सकते हो आप कोई दिक्कत नहीं है उसमें. Hello. Actually, it is due to Hello, network yes. glitch only. Uh, language is not there. Uh-huh. Mr. Elam, you can ch- write in the chat box window if you're not comfortable in like yeah, network definitely. issues. Yeah. 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 And. Uh. हेलो हेलो सर आवाज यू कैन राइट इट इन द चैट बॉक्स वी आर नॉट एबल टू हियर प्रॉपर्ली सर एक तो माइंड में है कि अगर इंडियन आई में जो मैं इंडिया ओके सर बोलिए बोलिए नेटवर्क इशू है शायद आपके पास इसलिए in the meanwhile sahib it's a interesting session yeah so, i'm reading I the learned, comments i learned i learned, I learned a lot yeah seriously yeah, wonderful you. very interactive session yeah thank you so much yeah. and we have international participants also who are attending this mm-hmm. session Currently, yeah, That's definitely. Nice. Yeah, I can read the names. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Alam, uh, Mr. Alam, he is writing it down. Okay. Sahib, if you want to drop in your email ID, you can drop in the yeah, uh, definitely. chat box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I am I am even typing in my business contact number. If yeah. anyone you know directly wants to, uh-huh. because email is something I am not very active on. Yeah. So this is my business contact uh, WhatsApp number. Anyone like if has any queries, I would definitely like to connect. So. Aryan, you can note down this number. Uh, you want uh, you want to connect it? Yes, sir. Yes, I am noted. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, he has written his uh, uh, question. Yeah. So. Yeah. If yeah. we want to promote, or any other thing. Yeah. 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 All right. So. Okay. so basically uh, mr alam uh, it's basically if you have manufactured products in india and you are willing to export them to foreign countries so first of all you will definitely need to connect with the companies or the importers you cannot uh, sell because it had it been drop shipping the costs and everything are viable for even a single parcel but if you want to sell from india on your you know personal expenses or the your personal cost so single pieces won't be viable you will need you know loads of containers and everything the consignments so for that i will uh, like you to go in for big companies or importers uh, that are already importing those goods and connect to them make them friends over your social portals or you can create a profile on linkedin that's i'll just type in the name for the platform that's linkedin and you can connect with the potential buyers of that product on a good quantity so that the costs do not pinch you for a transportation okay so 
it's it's okay. i hope it's clear yeah i i think okay. uh, you answered the question uh, addressed his concern very well yeah mm, yes so Anupa? thank you again yeah if anyone want to join us for group photo can turn on their camera and then we can have a memorable moment with our speaker yeah so we are waiting for another 1 minute yeah so smile can can we have one more pic please i would like to you know have my wife along with just one pic okay okay no problem no problem no problem please okay please. so thank you thank you all for joining us thank you and uh, keep you posted for future events yeah. yeah all right so i guess we have had the picture yeah 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 great all right perfect thank you thank you so much I, everyone i would say beautiful couple hi yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you bye Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Okay, bye. Thank See you. you. Stay safe. Thank you.